guest today, a real good one, like easily, easily top two or three in the whole country. So kudos to me for <laughs> for landing the all star. Um, in seriousness, um, it's a really good day in Chambers County as well as Troop County. Um, and if you flash back 15 years ago, we all know the landscape of this community looked a whole lot different. And we looked outside the window and everybody could see what was going on. And then our guest today simply went to work. And when there was an unemployment that people like me can't even comprehend, and, and many people in the room can't even comprehend, um, Valerie and her staff have put Chambers County on the map. And instead of leading the state in unemployment, we are leading the state in unemployment. And the secret to where we are today is simply job creation. So it is with great pride and great privilege, Rotarians, that I introduce the Executive <laughs> Director of the Chambers County Development Authority, Ms. Valerie Clay. on everything that's going on. Um, our end of the year report will be out probably the first week in January. We are finishing up that now. But I want to give you just a brief synopsis on what I feel about 2020. And this is going to be in the uh, report. It's by executive summary. It's going to be the shortest executive summary that's ever been written. It says, uh, Dear 2020, we survived you because we are chamber strong. <laughs> um, basically that's what I put in there and uh, the staff Kimberly and Chris were like this is perfect this is perfect but I did want to mention a couple people that we did lose this way uh, this year this year summary is going to be brief because it is what it is what it is we survived our friends our colleagues our families and Chambers County citizens we all lost loved ones to COVID-19 this year our CCDA lost its leader, Bobby Williams, and just a few short days later, the city of Lynette lost Councilwoman Shirley Motley. The legacy of Mr. Sammy Sawyer and Lafette will live on, as will Mr. Williams and Miss Motley's, but it's bittersweet. I would rather have them here with us to continue to lead and make our county better. And that's it. That's about all that I really can say about 2020. Now, our mayors and our commissioners and everybody else will, will say different things. Um, and sometimes the good that happened this year, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk about the good because there was so much bad that happened. But me being uh, the eternal optimist led by Kimberly Carter to always remind me to stay positive, um, I wanted to share a couple things with y'all. Uh, effective Monday, the Chambers County Development Authority staff moved into the new terminal out at the airport. It's a, I believe it's 4,700 square foot facility. That was funded um, by three, three arms, uh, the Development Authority, the City of Lynette, and the Alabama Department of Transportation. And we actually hit target on construction for that and um, actually moved in about a week or two earlier than originally thought. Um, Larry was there this week. Greg, you were there as well. Um, very, very nice facility. We'd love to host y'all there for, for lunch one day when we get everything set up and where we can all uh, spread out safely. Uh, we would love to have y'all out there for a lunch one day. So Rob, I'll be getting with you about that because it is a, a really, really nice facility and it does belong to the community. Um, progress on the airport extension itself. We went from 4,400 feet to 5,400 feet. That will be open in December of 2021. Now, what does that mean for us? That means that our airport and our runway will be longer than um, Auburn Opelikas. So we always like to uh, try to outpace ourselves and set ourselves apart from our competitors and our neighbors. They're not always necessarily competitors, but in, in my game, 
they are competitors, friendly competitors. So we like to be able to set ourselves apart. And, Why don't you um, take another year for the airport to run? <clears throat> I'm sorry, the runway itself is a huge, it's like an $8.1 million project and we got federal funding from uh, Senator Shelby and the construction of it is just massive. We had to acquire some land on the northern side of the airport or what we call the approach side and then we also had to mitigate some wetlands. So when you're dealing with the federal government on mitigating wetlands, that takes a very, very long time. So um, it's uh, sometimes just watch it like watching paint dry. You're thinking, you know, then COVID hit. So pretty much government stuff just shut down and papers got moved to the bottom of the stack. So. But now uh, there's heavy machinery and equipment out there, so uh, we're back on back on track now. We had originally thought July, but it's been pushed back to December now, and that's boring. We don't have any bad <coughs> weather, so. Well, when they be a uh, terminal manager then? Uh, I I don't know yet. To be a regional airport that is going to be designated, Lynette has received a designation as the re, as, as a regional airport, which is a big deal as well. Um, the, when the airport was open last year, anybody could, um, you could from my layman's terms, okay, because I'm not an airport person by no means, nor do I want to be. Um, if you, somebody was flying in, it was unmanned, they could trigger something to cut the runway lights on and it, then they had self-service fuel station there as well. So you could land there without uh, a manager or staff members on site. Um, that is the goal for this as well. Um, everything is so highly automated now with technology that you can do a lot of these things without having someone there during the middle of the night. If we do have people that land um, after hours, um, they will have access to the building. All they have to do is punch a code and it will ring my phone and I can let them in to the pilot's lounge and the flight planning area. Um, so all of that will be, it's a 24 hour trip. Um, the city, it is city owned. So that will be up to the city to decide if they want a full-time manager or part-time manager. Uh, my vision in the next five years is to have maintenance and operation facilities there and to have other businesses related to the aerospace industry that will locate in and around the area because of the, the airport. Um, hangar space, uh, and this I'm going to pass this around. This is not a very pretty picture because it's got my writing all over it. But what we've been doing is going and visiting different airports across the state and looking to see what works and what doesn't work. And in our line of work, what I have found out is individuals are more than happy to share their successes and their failures with us to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes that they do as well. So we want to make sure that we have a solid plan uh, for hangars, which will incorporate larger corporate jets as well as smaller uh, aircraft as well. Um, we have a lot of interest. I'm currently talking with about five owners of airplanes and aircraft that would love to build space there for a hangar and move their operations there. So, and one thing I will note, because of COVID in 2020, private, air, private aircraft use has skyrocketed because people are not flying commercially right now. And uh, once a week, John Souls from Texas flies in, and right now he's flying in to the Auburn Airport to come visit the facility in Valley that's currently under construction. So um, they are anxiously awaiting for the runway to be open, and it will be a full service terminal where they will be able to buy fuel, they'll be able to store their airplane. They, I think they have three aircraft, and then they will be able to uh, leave their vehicle that they purchased locally from. Langley here in Lynette. Um, so when they land, they can hop in their car, drive to the facility to stay a day or two, or stay even a couple hours, hop back in the car, go back to the airport, and fly out. So we want that to be a full service, great experience. And again, from my aspect of economic development is making everybody's experience here better than our neighbors. So that's, that's kind of my long-term goal is terminal space, make it first class, the hangar space, 
make it first class and then the overall customer experience make it first class because word of mouth and with this thing travels very fast. You know, the hangar space is an interesting thing that, that's not, uh, it's open like an airport, the government open like an airport, it's compressed and surrounded. I've heard they're trying to take some land away from the Indian Pine Job Corps to expand the runway. Are we getting inquiries from any of the people who presently store their planes down on land? Yes. I bet you we are. Yes. That's a good yeah. thing. Well, and a lot of those people that, that utilize that facility down there are actually some of our locals, too. So we want, we want them back here. And um, I always like to tell people, we have the closest industrial parks in the state of Alabama to the Atlanta airport. We're on the good side of traffic for Atlanta right now as we speak. Um, anywhere, you can get to anywhere in Atlanta from here faster than anywhere else in the state of Alabama. Um, so we want that experience as well. We know how much building and residential development and traffic has increased in the Auburn Opelika area. So our hopes are that uh, we can pull some of those customers here and that they can be in certain places in Auburn Opelika quicker than they can from the other side of town. So again, it goes back. It's not because of me. It's not because of our staff. Um, it is because of all the resources that are here, and it's because of all the leadership that people have provided and given to us to be able to do our job. So most important thing, location, interstate. Second most important thing, water, okay? We're blessed with Chattahoochee River. We're blessed with Interstate 85. And uh, my friend who's here with me today, he, um, his claim to fame is his wife is the Valerie Gray of Heflin. So his wife, Tanya, uh, is a very well-respected economic developer in Heflin, Alabama. Same as me, small town girl, wanted to come back home and loves her hometown and wants to make a difference there. And to me, that's all the difference in... Um, successful economic developers in small towns is you got to have that love and that connection. Well, one quick question. Is there any thoughts of an airport road from Public Road? Uh, yes, I, I think that's our goal. Uh, the, the biggest obstacle we've got to overcome right now is helping our water and sewer providers with Chattahoochee Valley Water Supply District in East Alabama. Because we are on the Chattahoochee River and we have that permit to pull so much water from the river, uh, we are being targeted and we are targeting a lot of food and beverage projects, okay? So we have to strike while the iron's hot on that and make sure that our water and our sewer capacity and infrastructure can accommodate those needs for us to continue to recruit food and beverage. And then of course access to the airport is going to be critical. Um, we currently go through Hughley and uh, through a small little residential neighborhood. When we moved out there uh, two days ago, we took uh, gift bags to all the residents that live on that road and just said, pardon our progress, pardon our dust. You know, it's gonna get better and we owe you all a bunch of car washes after this is over. <laughs> but um, that's a high priority as well, is finding somewhere off of exit 77 to get access to the airport because it's crazy. You can see the Carter Lanier Mill, you can see the interchange, but then you have to go all the way around mm -hmm. to get back to it. So as a crow flies, that would be nice to have access somewhere off of that interchange. Well, where would it, if you had your brothers, you know, if you could put it where you wanted to, would it, I guess it would be past the uh, motel? You know, it depends on who all owns, uh, owns land out there and, um, you know, could we get it through on the Norboard Access Road? I don't know. Um, those are questions that I can't answer. We're going to have to get some engineers to answer those questions for us and to uh, make sure that we get it the most feasible but also the most fiscally responsible route as well. Money always plays a big part of that just because... A crow, as a, like I said, as a crow flies, if it's right there, but you've got to cross wetlands, it may not make sense uh, to spend all that money. So we've got to be fiscally responsible. I will tell y'all, because uh, I love this back and forth question, but I will tell y'all, when you see your city leaders, when you see your county commissioners, when you see your mayors, um, since 2008, 
18, no, I'll say 2017, we're working on a spreadsheet. Your local leaders have spent $34 million local money on infrastructure improvements. Those things don't get them reelected. Okay, those are that's water that you don't see underground. That's sewer, that's curb and gutter, that's uh, purchasing land for industrial development. So our local leaders, they have stepped up, and that includes everybody. That includes the city of Lafayette, Lynette Valley County Commission. Um, every year when I come talk to you guys, I tell y'all that we have the best working relationship, that it can't get better, and every year it just keeps getting better. <coughs> um, because everybody knows that um, economic development is the pathway to paying for other things that you need within your cities and within your county. You can't just um, make money, you can't make money off of sewer, we know that. Um, but those are things that they have to do to keep their infrastructure rolling and to keep their city and county operations going. So if you see that, and we'll publish that sometime next year, we're fine tuning all the numbers, but the last check that I did, it was um, looking at it, it was about $34.9 million that they had spent. And to me, infrastructure is a very responsible expenditure. Questions or comments? At the new development for the Holland homes in Fair, I still call it Fairfax. Mm -hmm. okay. When you turn off of the little Cones Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And turn on cones. Uh-huh. Is it gonna be on the left or the right? Um uh, Holland Homes will be on the left. I have to do this. That makes a L. Yeah. Because I get on okay. Um Holland Homes will be on the left. Uh, Patrick and Chris Clark are developing homes on the right. right. Yeah. The good thing is we're getting infrastructure, we're getting sewer to that whole development. So that is going to open up that. And since the City of Valley did that, we've had, Kimberly in my office has had multiple phone calls of people wanting to see housing plans, you know, what's the price range, who's the realtor, and all of these things. So um, there's a need out there. And there's also a need for uh, additional multifamily housing as well. So we've got uh, a big need in our area for that. Well, tell a little bit about the, you know, they're going to be smart homes. They're going to work with all of them and the development. Tell a little bit about that. And that was one of the things that um, when the county charged us with doing human recruitment, I want to make sure I don't go over my time. Um, Human, recruit, human capital, they, they use these fancy words, human capital recruitment. Basically, it's getting people to move to your area, okay? Get them to move here, live here, spend their money here, and there's pros and cons to both of them. You know, you've got transient people that come in that just work here and leave, but those that work here, they spend their money at the gas stations here, they do these things, and they'll pick stuff up on the way home, and they're not a drain on a lot of your resources. Um, on the other hand, uh, people who live here, that increases your tax digest, that increases your uh, ad valorem for the county, for the cities, etc. So it's, there's not a negative or a pro or a con to either one. You want people coming into this area, spending their money, living here, sending their kids to schools here, things like that. So um, what we did in recruitment is we found that because of COVID, a lot of people can work from home now. Well, how do you do that? Well, we're in a great position with huge bandwidth. We've got 10 gigs of up and down load with Charter, Spectrum, and WOW in the area. So we've got dual access. So that's a big recruiting tool. And then the second thing is um, older generations and younger generations now want smart homes. The, the smart homes are, is kind of deemed that through Alabama Power Company where you can control everything in your home from this. You can be headed home and you can hit your phone and say, cut my air down to 68. But it also uh, manages your hot water heater. It manages your door locks, your security, your heating and air. Um, there are so many things that make it green and make it less um, taxing on your um, infrastructure grid. So. That, I wish I'd have brought a pamphlet on that because it's pretty neat to see. Um, the, the hot water heater thing is amazing to me it, of how you can control that and how um, it won't be a burden on your power bill and it makes your stuff run more efficient. So, what 
we're not mistaken, um, that one will start breaking around. Um, is it the first of the year? I think the first of the year, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and a lot of that groundwork the city had already done. You know, the city was nice. very visionary in cleaning, uh, clearing and grubbing a lot of the, uh, the land that they had already there. Mayor says John Soul Foods is getting cranked up too. They're spending a lot of money out there. And there are a lot of people working out there right now in the construction and they're using a lot of local people too, which makes us very happy as well. So yeah, I look for them um, to really start hiring probably within the next six to nine weeks, I would say, give or take, and then start training and then turning product out probably in May or June, optimistically speaking. Right. One good thing about the John Souls Foods, uh, Mayor Riley says that the, the pay is going to be very good. Pay is pay is very good, um, and one of the things I will let y'all know as citizens and as taxpayers, um, all of our incentive packages that we do now, we don't incentivize anyone who pays starting wage less than fifteen dollars an hour, and you have to really take and that is new projects looking things like that. We took a really hard look, and I would encourage anybody that if you have the opportunity to do a, um, it's called a poverty simulation. Um, it's kind of like what you do with the kids, you know, in the schools where you say, okay, you're an architect, you make 80000 a year, but then they got to go around to each table and make their mortgage payment, they got to pay their insurance, they got to go to the bank, they got to go to the grocery store. Well, we do those with the high school kids. Um, but we did a poverty simulation of what it's like to live in poverty and how hard it is to get out of it, okay? So that we can understand that when we're recruiting these jobs, if somebody's paying $9.50 an hour, how can a family of four survive off of $9.50 an hour? And they can. So moving forward, and we started this last year, um, it's either $15 an hour starting pay or there are no incentives offered to your company. So, and we're seeing a lot more people in the state of Alabama do that as well. We don't feel like that that has hurt our competitive edge. We feel like that a rising tide lifts all boats and if we miss a project because they only want to pay $10 an hour and they didn't get enough incentives, then, then they are better fit somewhere else. Any other questions?